All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for July 5th, 2023, 6 p.m. at the Smith Park Shelter House. Good evening, council, audience members, and administrators. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, Ms. Burner, if you would call roll, please. Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay is absent. Councilman Rogold. Here. Six members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Vice Mayor Grimm. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be together. We thank you for this wonderful city in which we live. We ask that you'll be with this council and with the audience members. Help us to make the right decisions for the city, both for the city and for its residents. And we ask that you look out for our first responders. This is what we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. on the, uh, the uh, special meeting held on June 12th, 2023. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Any questions or comments on those in minutes, Council? And when you're ready, Ms. Burner. All right, Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Stain was not present. Okay. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. All right. The minutes, those minutes are accepted. Five zero one. All right. Then moving on for the minutes for the regular scheduled council meeting, June twentieth, two thousand twenty-three. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston. Second by Mr. Bond. Any discussion on those minutes, Council? You ready? All right. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Abstain was not present. Okay. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. <laughs> the minutes are also accepted 501. All right. Mr. Dale, I believe you had a suggestion. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move that we move the downtown turn lane discussion until after comments from members of the public so they'll have their chance to speak their piece and we can use those in our decisions. All right. We would need a uh, second. Who is the second? So, uh, motion by Mr. Grimm, second by Ms. Eggleston. Okay. So, the motion is just to move the comments or the uh, traffic study down after the comments so that you guys can say what you guys want to say, then we can discuss it with the topic instead of topic skipping a few things into the report and then the comments so that should work better Good call just, for the vote. yes okay uh, councilman cook yes councilman roadwald yes mayor lowry yes vice mayor grimm yes councilman bond yes councilwoman eggleston yes that passes six zero all right um, you, you list, did you just say just the downtown discussion? Yes. Okay, because we've got the letters that are they're supposed to be read as well. Um, you want, did you want to include that or how did you? I would move that we dispense with the reading of the letters and enter them in as part of the minutes. Okay. That way they become, still become a public record. Because yeah, council all has the letters, we correct? We all have the letters. If anybody out there wants it, we can give you copies yeah letters. letters submitted from a few of the business owners three of them so I mean we've all got them we've all read them and it'll be it's public information will be entered into the uh, the minutes so if anybody wants to read them they can read them yeah or you could yeah yes so um, so I had the motion from mr. Graham mr. Graham Second by Ms. Eggleston. Okay. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? 
Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. All right, that passes 6-0. All right, moving on. Mr. Bridge, City Manager for it. Your turn, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the public, and members of council. I'll share with you the City Manager report. So under discussion topics, the planning board recommend, uh, recommendation, uh, the email is attached. So council needs to have a series of a couple meetings to change the zoning over here for the Madison Street School built. Um, so we have, I have recommended a date for the hearing at eight on um, eight seven, that's during your regular scheduled meeting, and then the action would be thirty days after that. This is all according to our code. Would be at the eight twenty four meeting. So, if council is okay with those two dates, we just need a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston. Second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Any discussion on that? <coughs> and when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. That passes 6 0. All right. Thank you. Moving on to City Manager report. Uh, under Zoning Code Enforcement Codified Ordinances, the last meeting I discussed attaching Chapter 1460, which is our Steer Property Maintenance Code, to the Manager report. So, Council can review the review on that. That is attached. So uh, just take your time, look over that, and anything that sticks out to you, maybe we can have a meeting on that to change that. Uh, great community events. We had the uh, big uh, big events this past couple weekends. A community garage sale, fireworks show at Haddock's Field. So thank you to all the volunteers and the paid workers. And again, it was a great event. Uh, both of them were awesome. So really, really proud for that. And the last thing for the city manager report, we did keep it kind of low this, this uh, meeting just because of the turn lane discussion is the track, trash and recycling services. The contract is attached. We do need to get that out for bid. So uh, we had discussion time set aside for that tonight. Should council want to go with that? We got to look at that contract. We really want to see what uh, contract terms you guys want to adhere to. Do you want them to keep the same containers as far as uh, Rumpke, as far as supplying them? Do you want them to even have to use containers? Stuff like that. So if council is prepared to have that discussion, we can go through tonight or we can have it at the July 17th meeting. Did you have something, Mr. Roadwell? I mean, I mean, I'm sure Rumpke has the same size containers that Waste Management currently has, correct? I'm sure they do. Yes. yes. I, mean, I, don't, I, I wouldn't see why we would change. Uh, it's more of a sense of do you want it written in the bid package that they get it as included in their costs, or is it like extra charges, stuff like that? Well, so you want to wait till the following meeting? Is that okay with council? Okay, so we'll wait till the 17th. Okay, so 17th? Yep. So that's probably good, so we can actually look over it and amend it. Now's our time to amend it for the next three to five years, should we want to amend it. So, okay. So, 7 17. And that's all I have for manager report. Be happy to entertain any questions. Any questions for Mr. Bridge? Ms. Eggleston. I just wanted to uh, say that the flags in front of the cemetery were awesome. They did. That was Mr. Bobo. Mr. Bobo. And it looked fantastic. Uh, like on council? Uh -uh. Go ahead. Randy? Yes. Just want to give you uh, thanks for the uh, new Smith Park sign or the freshly painted and uh, reserved sign. It looks fabulous out front. Uh, Engelson Steins did a very good job of that. We got a lot of compliments this past few weeks with how the city is looking. So uh, Howie and his crew, hats off to them. Keep up the good work. Anything else? All right, moving on to committee reports, none tonight. So and then that takes us to comments from members of the public. So if anybody has any questions, comments, feedbacks, all of the above, uh, go to the podium. We'll need your name and address, and then please keep it to five minutes. Uh, this thing will keep time for us. So when it goes to red, you're halfway through, or yellow, halfway through. When it gets to red, your five minutes is up. So if you need just a couple little seconds after that, that's not a big deal. So if anybody has any questions or comments, please go to the podium. Yeah, please. Do you want Howie to give his little presentation before because it's going to give all the options and stuff That's, like that? Mm, so that way they can hear that before they go. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Well, my comment had nothing to do with Okay, go ahead. And then we'll, and then we'll jump to Howie, then we'll go back to the comments. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. 
Um, I was just going to say you were talking about, you know, bidding that out. One thing I do hope that they will keep, whoever we get, is the fact that you can put your yard waste in your trash can. Uh, you know, weeds and stuff that you pull and just okay. within your tray. Yeah. Yeah, they used to have a separate container for that, which would be fine. I didn't think I could get all mine in that little one, but I've been able to. But that's something I really appreciate having and whoever you choose. So. Yeah, go ahead. Janelle, I mean, I mean, I know you probably have a small senior citizen container. Yeah, I, do. Um, I throw my grass clippings of mine. Yeah, oh, you're, yeah this, you're allowed to, this contract with waste management this past couple of years has yeah, been allowed. Yeah, I really yeah, yeah, it's great. It saves a lot of time. <laughs> thank you, Janelle. All right, Mr. Kitko, I'll hand it over to you, sir. All right, thank you, Mayor, members of Council. Before you get started. Okay. Yeah, before you get started, here, I just wanted to give a little word of how this really came about. So I know in 2017 we had the same similar discussion. So this is a separate, separate event from that. So this all started when we got the attention from the residential developments. Council really wanted to see how those developments were going to impact 235, 571, namely our biggest intersections. So we had the traffic study done. We just amended that to account for some additional uh, turn lane, I'm not turn lane, sorry, additional road uh, as well to see how it's going to impact Group Baker by the pool. So during the data, we hired Choice One to complete the data. So all this data was done by certified traffic engineers. So that is what we're going off of. They had submitted the traffic report. The current traffic counts do uh, warrant turn lanes. So we supply that information with council. So the administration, we just done our job as council had to direct us to do. We are here to answer any questions, but this is a really good opportunity for the council and their elected, the elected officials and their constituents to really have a good discussion about what's going on. Again, we are here to answer any questions that anyone may have. But um, again, I really hope it's a good, good, valuable discussion between the elected officials and um, for any great people. So that's all I wanted to say, just a little preface it. How he's done a fantastic job of looking at the data. He has options for you guys. It's not just what you see on this piece of paper. How he's done a really good job of, of learning this and knowing it like the back of his hand. So any questions, we'll be happy to entertain. Thank you, Mr. Jacob. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, members of the council, members of the public. Um, basically, what started out in 2017 was we applied for uh, congestion funds for short. Uh, they're federal funds, and then everybody knows we all showed up at the firehouse, and that we had to go through environmental and public comment period um, because we were seeking uh, an alternative because they were congestion, congestion mitigating funds. So an alternative to that was turn lane discussion. So the traffic counts haven't changed since then, so the traffic counts are what they are um, by traffic standards. Uh, turn lanes are warranted. Whether they get put in or not, that's a whole different story. So then jump to now, I started this uh, repaving project for 235 back in 2018, shortly after that, after that was taking place. We had no developments, nothing like that to add on when I was first applying. Now, the, the funds in this project are 80% federal and 20% local. But the way this federal is, it's not a new project. It's asphalt paving, so we don't have to do any alternatives. So the, the way it's going to be finished out when um, Shelly Company comes through here in the next couple months and paves is as it is sitting today. So these are the preliminary discussions to have if the city alone is a home rule town, decides it wants to do some sort of improvements to any or all intersections um, to uh, minimize disruption and, and possibly increase traffic flow. So what I found out is I brought on choice one to take those um, traffic counts and take what we had in 2017 with all those stalls and how can we reduce it and try to uh, do some congestion mitigation but um, keep parking spaces. That was number one uh, topic of discussion. So basically how it started is uh, we had about 31 parking stalls in 2017. The sheet that you have in front of you is what would be the um, biggest improvement to traffic and the least uh, disruption to parking by only, you know, possibly only removing eight parking spots and um, still getting turn lanes put in. So they were able to minimize lane width, um, lane channelizing. I think before they might have been 100 feet, 150 feet long. Now they might be down to 100 feet long. Um, so we, one is they got the parking stalls reduced. And then they added turn lanes to all intersections, uh, just like the uh, westbound lane. So we, they removed it from 31 to 8, and they were making efforts to minimize the impact on parking availability. 
We changed the turn lanes. We adjusted the stop bars a little bit in that sheet to try to move them a little bit close to the intersection. Yes, we still have the truck traffic, but they were adjusting uh, stop bars a little bit to still be able to make those turns. Maybe have a few people back up, but it, it's not uh, bad. And then another one was uh, signal improvement. Uh, currently our heads do not have turn arrows, so we would have to upgrade signal heads. So the options are, as you see on the page, that, would, uh, that I said would be the most traffic uh, improvement that we could make with the right of way we got and the least amount of parking spaces is what you see there. Um, to have it, the, the legend of choice one, their name and the description of the project is on your right. And then of course on your right side there on Jefferson is your current turn lane that is in existence today. Your other ones there are your uh, southbound lane, eastbound lane, and your northbound lane. And you see where there's an X, those would be uh, the potential spots that would be removed with the, let's call it the, um, the, the big plan to, to do both. Outside of that, there, there is an option to possibly um, go into single lane um, traffic or maybe just take out this southbound lane and have turn lanes at three intersections. Maybe turn lanes at two intersections. The southbound lane heading south is our number one congested um, travel uh, way. And then the eastbound uh, side, which is the left side, is your, our second most. When you're heading north, we don't have uh, many issues with uh, turning or waiting behind people. And when you're traveling west, we don't have issues with waiting on turning traffic. So really we have two parts of the four part intersection, excuse me, intersection that um, we have issues with. So we have this plan and then we have a plan to maybe adjust uh, removal of a turning lane there in the south, which would take us down to six parking stalls. The last option would be, and this is where I've been on the phone probably three to five times with the engineer on just signalization. How could you make it? If Let me cut you off, just real, not to interrupt, make sure I heard you right. Take it down to only removing six stalls, not leaving six, right? Uh, taking down to, um, yeah, taking, putting, giving back to parking stalls so where we'd only have six removed. Okay, I just wanna make sure I heard you right. Yep. Um, so then going down to signalization, which we kicked around like the most is leave what we have, change the signal heads to where, if you're familiar with the Medway Lower Valley, where they got the turn arrow. Mm -hmm. um, our problem is, is we get one or two or three turns, of people wanting to turn on that south, and then you have a straight. So with the traffic counts we got, if we get a green arrow to turn left, like we're gonna go to Tecumseh, you're gonna get one or two cars through. That, that signal's probably gonna, probably gonna last 10 to 15 seconds. The other three parts of the intersection are going to back up because of that. And one, once you go to green, green after that left arrow, like at Lower Valley had, does, of course they don't have the traffic there. We will now get some of our traffic pushed through, through that intersection. And then um, we'll be already moving to the, to the east-west signal. So yes, it may help get that southbound lane and a turn arrow there on the eastbound lane, get a couple cars through but the whole intersection as a whole will not be improved. Yeah, you'll get a couple, but you're not, the people will always be backing up waiting on those green arrows like at uh, Lower Valley and um, Spangler Road. So there was a couple different options that, were, that uh, we were trying to look into that could be the best of both worlds or try one that would possibly work without any disruption, but even that doesn't really help us with our traffic. So those are the, that's the information that I found out working with uh, Choice One and the um, traffic counts. Thank I you. I can sir. entertain any questions. Yes. Mr. Vice Mayor. Okay, the red X's are the parking spaces that would be eliminated, correct? I'm sorry? The red X's are the parking spaces that would be eliminated, correct? Yes. What are the red X's at, on Jefferson Street at the intersection? So the little X's are stop bar or the removal of um, a parking space line. See the big X's, the taller ones, Yeah. those are parking spaces. The little X are the removal of that line or the movement of a stop bar. Talking about that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Aren't going. there already turn lanes on Jefferson Street both directions? No, there's only a turn lane on the westbound lane. Between Rite Aid and uh, Abe's Hidden Treasures, that's the only turn lane. So the, then there wouldn't be any parking spaces eliminated along here. 
In front of this is right. In front of CBS. Right. Writing. Oh, I'm looking through back. Okay, this you're, is, you're this upside is down. Right? Yeah. yeah, so no, there's already no um, parking spaces there. They, it's already there. It's currently in existence. So nothing would get removed in front of nothing the Nothing would get removed by right aid there on Jefferson. Well, there's no parking there now. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, that yeah, stays as it is today. Okay. And these turn lanes, 25 feet, that's what, two cars? Uh, each car, for instance, I know I just measured my truck over. They run anywhere from 17 to 24 feet in length is what kind of One an average car. vehicle. So it's not going to do much good. Okay. I'm done. Thank you. All right. Council, any other questions or comments? So, you, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. You said one option was not putting in a turn lane on uh, the northbound side of Maine. Uh, just leave Correct. Because you don't have as much difficulty because typically most people, if they're heading north, they'll divert down Church Street and, Cor and correct. avoid the downtown corridor. Okay. I actually like that idea. Which part? Not. Not putting one on, on the north. northbound side. Yeah. And then maybe extending. I want to get four or five cars in there. Mm -hmm. what, Holly, what's the, what Dale was asking, in front of CVS, there's like these two small X's going across what would be like, in my mind, that's a stop line. That's the stop, that's the strap. That's the stop bar right there that is okay. currently in that place, and then you see the new stop bar right in front of 10 feet. <clears throat> okay, gotcha. I just wanted to make sure I understood what I was looking at. So they would move that stop bar to the same distance as the straight line, straight through traffic. Oh, okay. That's what you had talked about, semis maybe having some difficulty, so occasionally they might have to back up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But to allow more than one or two cars in the turn lane, we'd have to take away more parking spaces, correct? Yes. Okay. I have nothing else. All right. If we went with this exact setup, and, and I'm morally focusing on going, you know, going south and turn the, the left lane going to Tecumseh. So you've got two, two, two uh, parking spots being removed only right there. Uh, on, the, on the southbound lane? Correct. Three. three. See the three big X's? One of them is your um, channelizing taper right there next yeah. to it. Two. One, two. I do that so. Gotcha. Okay, three. <laughs> yeah, I, I do have something. Else. But so if if three, let's just say we if we went with the three and it didn't fix the flow, if council wanted to, you could go back and, and add another if you or take another if needed. I mean that's that's always a possibility to reach. But it's always I mean I would say it's always better to start smaller and then adjust as accordingly. Striping is always an option to change. Okay. Okay. Over here, Oh, okay. All right. I have a question. Yes, sir. The green for Main Street is longer than the green for Jefferson, correct? I'm sorry? The green for Main Street is longer than the green for Jefferson? For the most part, unless the two are communicating, that usually keeps it going longer. But yes, I think it's. Uh, I haven't looked at the seconds, but I think it's 52 seconds north-south lane, uh, north, north southbound, east-west, I think it's 45 or something like that. The northbound uh, do more communication. The eastbound don't get as much of that because of uh, it, it's not working with the Lake Avenue signal. Okay. Seems like longer, but that's all right. Mm-hmm. And, and like if, if nothing different. is detected in the radar, see we have radar now instead of the loops in the road. So if a vehicle is traveling and it sees vehicles coming from the lake, it's trying to get them through that intersection. It'll know if there's five coming through, it'll try to get five or so through that next radar point. Um, so then if no one is sitting in front of those radars, then, it'll, then it, it can switch quicker, especially if he's found and sitting in front of their radars. So it's like you'll loop detection, it's triggered, our signals are timed and radar at the same time. So it uses both to keep traffic trying to move it. Okay. I guess it just seems like longer when you're standing there waiting across the street. Yes. Thank you. Hang on just a second, guys. Anyone else? All right. 
we'll go to comments. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please go to the podium so we can get them on, on record for the minutes for Hi, I'm Connie Buskirk. I live on Main Street. And Can I get your address? 121 Thank South you. Main Street. Thank you. I, since we revisit, are revisiting this from 2017, I really want you to be aware that there is possibly more businesses on Main Street that's going to be affected than there was in 20. Excuse me, in 2017. My biggest concern is all the businesses down there. This city needs the businesses and we need the support from this, from all the customers that's brought in. The parking is, some days you can get a spot. What I'm looking at right now is right in front of our building. I can't even park in front of my building to take my groceries upstairs. And that's the only other option is to park in the alley, drag it through the building and or, or around the block. And that's my biggest concern um, for me personally. But with all of the businesses that are on both directions, I'm basically the middle of the block. The businesses that are on both ends of us, and I'm grateful that we've got them, is going to be impacted severely. The traffic is a concern, and the flow of the traffic. And I would like to see other options than just having this intersection this way. Has there been options of making a truck route? Use Church Street as a truck route. There's already turn lanes at Lake and Main Street. There's ways to make the intersection at Jefferson and Church so trucks can turn. And it's the biggest issues is during school hours and when businesses in Huber Heights and up on uh, 36 at KTH are changing shifts. I just, I would like to keep the convenience of the parking for the customers and personally for me too, but that's my biggest concern. But as options, I don't know what it takes to make a truck route to get people down Church Street more because the locals know to use it. But if it could be something to change the, the flow a little bit that way. And I'm done. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Do you have a uh, dis disability parking thing? Yeah. It's in my car. I'll turn it out. Ask about getting a disability parking spot in front of your building. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to take them out that far. I'll give you a better fighting chance. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is David Campbell. I'm the wife Linda. We own and operate an antique shop on 131 South Main Street in Nickel Isle. And we all, I gave you a letter to read. I hope you read it. And you've got a lot of information on it. And I do have another option. I would hope it works. I don't know. But Linda would like to read part of what the letter says, what we wrote for you. I need your, can I get your guys' actual uh, resident? 131 South Main. South Main. You need their actual address where they live, correct? Yes, one of those, you're going to take our parking space, yes. What's that? Well, you're going to take our parking space, yes. I didn't want to 
said. I think the last time they gave out the address. No, I thought it's a big address of their store. That's the address of their store. The address of the store. You need the residential address. Uh, yeah, probably, I guess. Yeah. What do you want? 131 South Main? I mean, it's for Mark Road. Mark Road in your clock. I mean, I mean, what, what do you want? I, usually they give their residential address. You have to address. give your residential address. Well, I thought maybe, I thought maybe this parking is about our effective, what we I, I wrote that down, sir. I got it. Okay. 131 South Main? 131, well, your mother, okay. That's one, good. One, you. One, <laughs> one, one, two, three, five, Mark Court Road. There we go. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, basically, if you read the letter, you'll see our concerns. Uh, we may have one or two uh, businesses that are not listed because Ted has several businesses and there's other ones too. But the main thing here is we went through this before. There's not going to be any place for our customers to park. And if you're saying now two, maybe three, we don't know, you don't know either how many, I guess. Dep depends what you're gonna do here. But we have an alternative to this whole thing and that's to make the street from South Main down at the, at the where the, the streets divide when they first come into town, make that all the way to front of Washington northbound all lanes and then southbound from north uh, well it'd be south main north main rather turn the traffic would turn right on Washington which is a wide street and then head south that would create parking on both sides more than we have now which is is what we need we you know you got people uh, building up north it's not going to get any better you're going to keep cringing on, uh, yeah re <laughs> you're going to keep taking our parking no matter what you talk about tonight so i think the best way is to look at his option on the paper and option two i've got two options of course, I'm understanding the one way north and, and Church Street South is very expensive. Well, get the money somewhere and help us out downtown. I mean, and you say, well, it's not a state route. Well, talk to, talk, talk to ODOT and see what you can do for us. I mean, don't just say, hey, this is what this study says, we've got to do this. Don't do this to us, please. And, and there's, there's 14 business on the north, on the west side of Main Street from Jefferson to Washington. There's only 10 parking spaces. Now you're gonna take three away from us. So at least it's seven. We won't be able to survive. I mean, most, most of our business is from out of town. 80% of our business is out of town. We need this. Please don't do this to us. And I, the option one, I, it, it just read it. It says it makes sense to you. I mean, we got this new lighting system. You paid six hundred fifty thousand dollars for the lighting system, and and you should be able to. You got some kind of control. It's cute through computerized, by my understanding. You can do quite a few work with the new new equipment. Read this and tell us what you can do. Please save us. We would appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, we'll go with Mr. Roblox. Go ahead, Mr. Roblox. Um, in, this, in this letter you wrote, um, you said there's only 10 parking spots on the west well, side. Well, there's actually 11. There's one in front of the police department. 11. That's not um, just, just not part But of you're, you're, you're either failing to mention or, or just over, you know, forgot to mention the public parking behind the strip. Yeah, that benefits Tay Lane, it'll benefit us. That benefits everyone. It's we public have, parking. We'll have a back it's public parking. It benefits yeah, everyone. It benefits everyone on Main Street. People out there don't know this. I've lived eight years. Eight years. Hang on, Janelle. Janelle, hang on. Right? Oh. <laughs> I mean, you got a little side here, a little side there. People don't see the little side. That's probably my parking. You just ended up by the gals and run the street. Yeah. 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 
Penny Lane plus all their customers. They go in the back door. But I'm just saying it's public parking, so sure. there's public parking there. It's just you're not relying on 13 businesses on 10 spots. It's 13 businesses on probably closer to 40. Once you count the public parking. You, you, you do understand. You know, it, it's not a, it, we got to have a parking space in front of the business, not the back of the business, to make it convenient for everybody. It's not convenient in the back of the parking lot. Well, I can't help if no one wants to walk. I mean, convenience is is great, but it's it's a convenience. It's it's not mandatory. It's not it's you know. I mean, I wish I could park in the front row of a Kroger's, but guess what? Sometimes I have to park out. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I mean, I, I get a, I've got a lot of territory here. I hope you read it. If you don't, I'm, I'm, I don't understand why you don't. So, Good. Put a lot of hours in this. Thanks, sir. Mr. Vice Mayor? I have a couple of things. I live on that same block on Main Street. Um, I hear business people complaining about parking, yet several of them park their vehicles in those yep. treasured parking spaces. A lot. That, to me, is kind of hypocritical. Well, that's on Main Street. You park on Main Street, too, don't you, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. But I'm not a business you owner. I'm not a business owner complaining about the lack of parking. Well, who's complaining? I'm not complaining. The only uh, the only time I have seen Main Street parking filled are the times the Masons have something going on. Main Street is filled. The Rite Aid lot well, behind I'm us I'm is filled. The that's now, that's about the, 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 the only time. I'm the future. Now, in the past, in the past, uh, the mayor has said. You know, we hear the same gloom and doom all the time. If somebody has a better idea, come up with it. Well, you guys have done that. This one fascinates me. Now, let me mm -hmm. see if I understand you here. I do too. Coming no north, the only green light is coming north. Yes. It turns red, the only green light is coming south. Yes. It turns red and then it's green both ways course, because we already, have, we already have turn lanes. I, this fascinates me. And this, this is dead, just like you know, on, 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 on Jefferson Street, there's always a dead if it's, light if it's if the green light, if the green, be free to do before, after, after, after. if the green light is only green, if it's green only one direction, everybody can go anyway. Exactly. And it will be communicating with the light at Lake Avenue to know exactly. how many people are waiting to turn exactly. to go south. So Mr. Well, Bridge. Can we bring this up to choice one, see what they think about it? We already, it, I've already, already went over that. I have already did that in my phase, my phase, which is the last one away from this. It's giving the signal longer for the southbound, because um, if they're heading south like he's got it, that gives that arrow to them, and by, their, by the traffic counts, the whole intersection does not benefit from it. Yeah. When they run it through a traffic model, granted it's not perfect, no one's perfect. But that's the phase one I was telling you about, by just changing signals, running a t left turn arrow, you run it for 12, 10, 12, 15 seconds, the other parts of the intersection will get backed up until you run them on a green, and then you run this other one over here on a left arrow, and then, then they finally get a green. So yes, I've already described this one in the first part. Well, no, there, this would not involve any turn arrows. You, you have to, you have to to be able to do turn, train, turn lanes like that. If if the only green light is for southbound, main, uh, northbound Main Street, you have the green light. They can go any way they want. Yeah. Everybody will clear out. Then there, it turns red, and then it turns green for southbound Main Street. They can go any way they want. So it you're clears you're, out. you're giving southbound an arrow to try and help congestion. No. You, no. Yeah, no. That, that, no. So no. your southbound no. lane and no. your eastbound lane are your two worst of the intersection. So you have to give them a turn arrow to get them going. Whether you're doing it a green by itself or a turn arrow, you're still giving them 12 to 15 seconds ahead of everybody else before you run north to south. Okay, eastbound traffic, where do most of them go? They go. They usually go straight or right-hand turn. Okay, so there are very few left turns. Yeah, e eastbound traffic. No, I take it back. Eastbound traffic is their normal left turn. The left turn is what holds the. I'm talking traffic. westbound. Westbound traffic. Your eastbound traffic's coming from the airport. So that that is your westbound traffic. Yeah, westbound. 
Yeah, westbound, they're turning actually. right up main or they're going straight. Okay. It's rarely do they get a left. And that's the only one that has a turn lane. <laughs> Don't know what happened way back when. I mean, that turn lane's been here since I moved here. Yeah. So the only, so we would not need to change it. All we need to do is change the programming on the lights to have it one direction green and then one direction green. And then here it can be both directions because here there's a turn lane and there's not much traffic coming from the west. But are you going to give north and south full full lights? No. I mean, because how are you explain this? If you just give south or yeah, southbound the average turn lane light, it, according to choice one, it's going to get two cars through. Maybe three. Here, here. Yeah, but you're not seeing it right. There will be no, I see it right. I drive, I mean, I, I've seen the lights. Lima has them everywhere. What, what, I'm saying, what he's trying to tell you is you got to put an arrow up there I, with the green light. I, I see, I'm, Lima, and I'm. And let those traffic flow for a bit. Well, but how long's a bit? Because well, then you're going to turn. Well, the traffic's low. If, if, well, so, I mean, are you going to give it a minute? Our biggest traffic flow is in the evenings and in the morning, period. Okay, hold on. So, through the day, it doesn't really matter. You can go out there in the middle of the day and it's your food truck. Hang on. You can walk across the street about anything. I can get to Mr. Cook. Go ahead, Mr. Cook. I'm sorry. First off, I'd like to thank the Campbells for bringing forth some options other than what Mr. Kitko has presented. I'll be honest with you. I think the win-win situation is the last situation where we make North Main or we make Main Street northbound one way, Church Street southbound the other way. It won't work. We don't lose any parking, and for the addition of a few barricades, that's all we need. What about the oversized vehicles? Yeah, you can't. I mean, here's another sit, thing. Hold on, hold on. Already a dangerous intersection. Hold on. Southbound church. If anything, church would be northbound because you don't want the southbound traffic at that beat. But either way, you're going to have. I know it happens like during the festival or any other main street when the main street shut off. They can't do it. Semis can go in front of the post office and over to church or, or, or reverse, however you was going to do it. But it is extremely tight, extremely dangerous. I mean, we have to manually control the light at 571 in church just to make sure that continues going because they're so big, they only get one one at a time usually through there because it's so tight. So that just creates a whole new safety issue. And then you're adding heavy traffic to residential areas. You're putting traffic in front of the fire station that typically wouldn't be there where if, if there's a semi or two caught right there and, and the fire trucks need to get out, it's a tight squeeze. But let me, semi has no worry. But let me go over what you were saying, Mr. Vice Mayor, and the Campbells. So if we took, just so you, I, I think you understand, but I want to make sure that I understand what you guys are saying as well. So if we take, we're, we're going south on Main to go left to, to go to Tecumseh. All the other three lights go red. They can. They can. Right, but, but hear me out. So, so you, you let that one lane go left or straight to, to get that traffic through, but then you're creating a bottleneck at the other three, Correct. regardless of how you time it. At minimum, the other one, which is your eastbound flowing traffic. Right. But the other two, not as much, but yes, all three would be. Well, if the <laughs> southbound Main Street is green, people coming from westbound on Jefferson will still be able to turn right. Yeah, but that'll eliminate a lot of that traffic. Yeah, our, our east will do that. That right turn will do that, and, and then it'll be your straight issues, which I don't know during peak times. The biggest issue is that southbound traffic and that eastbound traffic. Okay. If you fix one, you're usually hurting the other. So just no, no, you're yeah. fine. Let's let Mr. Go ahead, sir. At this point, my name is Ted Buskirk. I live at 123, 121. My business is at 123. We own the old IWF building. I would like to see at this junction, trying to control it with lights that we have, if we got to introduce a turn signal along with the lights we have, that's fine. 
but I, I can't see losing parking places unless we're destroying downtown anyway. Uh, that's the direction we want to go is to get rid of downtown and traffic downtown. Uh, then it's, it's a moot point. But if you want to get, increase the traffic flow problem area, the problem area is early in the morning, which really doesn't affect too awful much, if anything, because everybody's rolling through. The biggest problem is from 4 o'clock to about 5.30. And so we back up the traffic on the east and west lanes for a few minutes. There's not that much traffic there to back up. The northbound isn't that much to slow down for. It's just a matter of timing, in my opinion, to get the traffic to flow, get the southbound gone, and then, you know, just uh, play fair with it. I'm not saying it has to be all one way or another. I'm just saying that if you give the southbound tra uh, traffic a little longer during those that time period where it's a problem, let them get out of the way, and then get some more traffic moving. And the way traffic signals work anyway, uh, if you can get three or four traffic uh, vehicles around the corner on the green and somebody goes on down straight, it, it, it's still going to be better than having the traffic all backed up waiting for one guy to come. And if, if we can get any kind of flow there with just traffic signals, I'm all for that. Thank you, Thank sir. you. Thank you. Well, that's what we're trying to do here is work up a compromise. All right, anyone else in the audience? Good. What is the traffic count? He'll have to. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Mr. Putterball. Alvin Putterball, 201 North Scott, Carousel Gallery, 125 South Main. What is the traffic count? For what time of day? Well, because like they like they were explaining, I've, we, we've been down there 20 years, and you know, early in the morning, late in the evening, you know, that's rush hour. Through the day, there's no traffic issues whatsoever. So really, I mean, you're talking about having patience. Just leave it like it is, and people will just have to deal with it because, you know, there, you're. There's no reason to add a, a turn lane if it's only going to benefit two or three cars at a time. You know, it's just you might as well leave it like it is because the, the traffic isn't, there's no traffic during the day at all. So, anyway, the traffic count. Is Southbound Main Street total just throughout, throughout the day 12,296 cars. <clears throat> Northbound Main Street total 8,525. Okay, now what Jefferson, time? Well, go this ahead. Is 20, this is over 24 hours. Yeah, we don't, we're not worried about 24 hours. Okay, because the traffic's not an issue. Also, 24. Let me finish. Okay. So we also have peak time here in Sarvin, like 7.15 to wherever they presented at the last traffic. So that's on a different page. Let me get through this first. So, and that's going to be hard to read because I'm on an Excel sheet. No, no, I just lost my spot. Give me one second to go. So 571 heading east is 6,000 cars. 571 heading west is 3529. So you want me to break that down for you? I think Mr. Robel's got it for you. on 523. I don't know where he's putting the peak hours. It's up top, that. very first page. It's 715 to 815. Okay, thank you. So 715.
Southbound, you had through 73, left 56, total 135. So it's from 715 to 815, is that what you said? Yes. So you need to add 135, 129, 97, 105, and 92. That'll give your total peak time for southbound. Westbound. Total is 32, 41, 41. Oh, hourly total 148. That's not how I need to break it down. So 80, 110. 150, probably about 180 eastbound. Yep. Northbound, 41, 39. That's 80 plus 35, 105 plus 30, 135 plus 41. 176. Plus 40, what is that? 176, 176 plus 40. 176 is the final number on eastbound. These are bifocals too, by the way, and they still don't work. <laughs> 715, we're at 51 plus 49 plus 28. 128. Plus 16 plus 22. So those are your peak six. hours, but then they also did peak hours in the evening as well. So it's probably about the same hour, 315 to 415. So that's at the peak. We also look at the total, which we are right. for, the, for the group easier. So this is what I'm reading just so you guys know how hard it is. Well, um, but we can definitely figure out Dan, do you remember what time the evening peak hour was? Uh, it was uh, 3.45 to 5.30. 3.45? Yeah. And peak hour northbound was a shade over 800, and southbound was a shade over 1,200. Okay, so now that's now. And, and now. we really don't need to worry about now, because you guys are all concerned with yourself with the building of new housing development, increasing the traffic. So why do we need to do that now if we don't really need it now instead of waiting? Why don't we wait until the houses are built when we have that problem? Can I? Yeah, because that's how we stated earlier. We're, we're getting ready to repave Main Street. Yeah. So. But you can, he just said restriping, it's no big deal. Restriping to an extent, a turn lane is no big deal. Restriping the entire Main Street corridor. Yeah, but that won't be for it, seven or eight, nine years. Who knows how long it'll be before the housing gets the other people in. So you, you don't want to change anything until the houses are completely done? And well, no, until at least it gets some more people. There's nothing there now. All this is speculation. What, the housing is speculation? Yeah, because they haven't even started yet. It's, it's well. I'm on the. It, it's it's there. It's, I, I'm, it's on there. The, I'm on I, the. I know it. Board, no, so you're I know. on the board, sir. But um, you know, so yeah, but I mean, we're still not. You're, I mean, you know, it's not. Gonna but be, here's the. Th I mean, so choice one: the engineer, the professionals. I and and I am a big proponent of leaving it up to the professionals when it comes to certain things that I don't understand. Well, how many businesses do you own? Uh, me, none, no anymore. There you go. Um, you know. And how many? How many did you have on? Main Street that needed. I didn't parking. have any, but again, well, there you go. if I can finish my statement without being interrupted, I'd be choice. Choice once told us in, in this study that turn lanes were worn before the first house is ever built. Current yeah, traffic they study were warranted in seventeen. Uh, turn lanes right. are, are warranted now. But why would you, have, you don't have to listen to them? Okay, hold on. Can I say something, mm -hmm. Chief? Can I get your opinion on traffic on Main Street if you're going down through peak hours and you need to go down Main Street? Just like I said in the last meeting, there's times we had, just take, let's take the community health center. There's times that we have calls we can't even pull in because of the backed up traffic northbound and southbound. Also, our, our way of going out of the city to a hospital in Dayton, Springfield, uh, Beaver Creek to Soin, any of those hospitals is down Main Street. And it, it gets clogged, it gets backed up. My units are sitting there with a person in the back of that medic in either critical condition or having a heart attack or stroke, and seconds count. And we get bottlenecked and we get stuck. And everybody said, well, you can go down church. Church is no better. And if you reroute traffic to church, then it's going to be even worse for us. No matter what we do, our, main, our streets are only going to be as big as they are, and the congestion is going to just be no matter what it is you do. 
it's going to stay the same. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, you guys are trying to solve a problem, but there really isn't a solution for it. Thank you, Alvin. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Mr. Janelle. You know? <laughs> What's that? I think the clear answer for the path count. Oh. You didn't get a clear answer, right? How, how can we make it more clear for you? We when we read those, we, that's what we broke down. Oh, Dan just broke one of us. I'll, I'll, I'll get with you. I'll get with you. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, okay. I know, that's what Dan was doing. Go ahead, Janelle. I'll get you, Mr. Park. Okay. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, gosh. I, I kind of wonder what, what plans are being made now that we're going to get a lot more tra you know, traffic and people. No matter what you do, Church Street and Scott Street are going to get way, way more use. What plans are being made to prepare for that? Because that one entrance to the housing thing is on Scott Street. Scott Street isn't a very big street. There's, there's multiple And a lot entrances. of people are, they're not gonna to wanna to go down 235 when they're coming in. They're gonna take church and cut over to Scott to go in that way. And otherwise, I mean, people are gonna be taking church anyway. Is there plans? How much is that going to cost? Does the street have to be widened? Does it? I mean, those streets are horrible now. And if there's a whole bunch more traffic on them, how is the money coming to that, from to do that? To that development, there's more than one interest. It's not just on Oh, the I know there's more than one, but people aren't going to drive clear down and take that if they can get there quicker by going Scott. I know that's not the only one, but there's, I mean, every, all of us now take church, or not all of us, because a lot of times I don't, but we take church and go around instead of, if it's backed up on Main Street. And you know, if people can get into their development that way, they're not going to be waiting around. They're, they're going to take church and Scott, and, and they're going to get a lot more wear and tear on those streets. I just wonder, are you planning ahead for that? Sometimes it seems like we jump into things so quickly. Well, I mean, it's going to be hard to judge traffic patterns depending on, you know, where these new houses, where these people work. Do they work north at KTH or do they work? So if they work north of a KTH, for example, then the majority of them. Well, right. Get... It's no issue there. But if you're coming from the other way. Right. It just depends on where these people work. And then you would have to adjust the traffic or the streets as, as needed. I mean, you can't, you know, you can't project everybody's going to come in one direction and then to turn out the majority of the plant is going to work. Oh, no, I'm not saying everybody will, but a lot more people. Right. There's going to be a lot more people, so there's de you know there's going to be a lot more mm -hmm. traffic on there. I mean, that must be expensive to have to do something for those roads, I would think. I just want to know, is, is that being taken into consideration? As and how soon are they going to do that? And I agree, it's a long time, praise God, <laughs> before there's going to be a lot of uh, development there. Because so, it won't matter. I'll be dead and gone. It, it'll, it won't matter a whole lot. But, <laughs> and, and I know that we need growth, but I just wonder, have we planned where we need the growth ahead of time? You know, what do we need? They started out, they were going to put in some rentals which everybody thought was a great idea, and I kind of did too, although I thought there were way too many, but now they're not going to do that. Now they're going to make a lot smaller houses, possibly. I mean, no. it's not that they are, but they're asking for a variance. In the same way, there was a variance on the width of the streets. It's a nightmare <coughs> going to be apprenticed when the garbage can, when the garbage truck goes through. And is, you know, with a whole bunch more people, I just think, I just think, I didn't think that was a great idea to make those streets narrower when they, you know, had already proposed them wider. I just, I don't know. I don't think people are looking ahead enough. And I kind of agree with him, with, you know, with doing everything right now. <coughs> it's a long time yet before there's going to be a lot of homes sold down there to change things. So I don't, I don't know. It just worries me that. It's not being looked ahead enough on a lot of that stuff. And, and I agree with the parking. Uh, Peggy had said something about doing something to find if they're going to have to take out 
place this, a parking lot or some kind of thing for people to park. I mean, I don't know how you can do that, but but I think that's a legitimate concern. I mean, do we just want New Carlisle to be a thoroughway for people to come and go, or do we want it to be a, a community where we have businesses and, and a town? And I don't know. Like I said, it isn't going to affect me that much by the time all that's done, but I just think you got to decide, the community's got to decide what kind of community they want. Because it is hard. I mean, that's the only way people can get through is 235. So uh, I guess that's all I had to say. Thank you, Janelle. Anyone else? Mike. Oh, Ma'am, can I go one? So uh, the peak hours. Uh, southbound turning left between the hours of 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. There was almost 1,100 cars that turned left. Um, you say the traffic is dead going that way during peak hour or during non-peak hours. Um, it averages close to 100 cars an hour that are trying to turn left at that light. Um, so, I mean, that's that's a lot. Of, I mean, it's still, I mean, I'm just saying, yeah, that's, you know, Good. Yep. Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, my name is Sherry Devlin. I'm the business owner of Edward Jones Investments there on 212 um, South Main Street, across from the CVS. Um, looking at this map, um, you have taking out two parking spots right there around our business. What you have to realize is that's all the parking I have in front of my business because um, it's the church. And so far, out of their kindness, they allow the, um, us to park there. But there are a lot of times that they tell us that we can't park there for different reasons, if they're having a funeral, if they're having something going on at the church. And it's limited parking when they have the school there. Um, and then, um, we, we have our, our ramp. Um, we already can't get a handicap ramp there. So, you know, we, we need some space to um, have our older um, <coughs> clients to be able to come into our building. Um, we do park over at the CVS, the employees. Uh, we have two businesses in that building. Um, there's two, biz two um, owners that uh, work in the salon, and then there's two people that work at Edward Jones. So that's four cars there that we have to park somewhere so our clients have room to park. So when the church says that we can't park there, then we have to make sure that our clients, because we have older clients and they cannot be parking down at the, the city parking and we expect them to cross the street twice when I don't even like to go and cross the street myself. So I can't expect my clients to, to do that. So if we have here, it looks like you're just taking out two, but really we can park several cars there. Um, so we have the salon that if they have a handicapped person and we have a handicapped person, Right there's all of our parking spots, and then, you know, we can't, we, we just can't have them crossing the street. Um, I know people have said, well, have them park in the um, CVS or Rite Aid. Well, we can't, I can't run my business on the mercy of the other businesses allowing me and my clients to park in their parking spots because they can at any time, like the church does, come and tell us, sorry, you cannot park here all day today. And I already switch my business hours around for the congestion. I mean, I basically do business with clients coming in from nine to three. So I'm having my clients miss the morning traffic, and then I don't have clients really coming in um, after, you know, 3, 3.30, because I don't want them hitting that traffic in the evening. 
So um, you taking it's you have just two parking spots that's going away in front of um, near my business, but you have to remember that all these businesses have employees that we have to park. And so by the time you park just the employees, yes, that's less parking spots for our clients. And we're, we're businesses. That's how we bring money into this town. This is how you know, we, we make money is through our clients. So this is a concern. Um, I just don't like being at the mercy of the other parking lots around me to say if I can park in their spots or not. And um, I'm, I'm already jockeying my own vehicle around because during the school time, the parking lot there at the church is limited because they have kids there in recess and traffic is coming through from the alley there. So we park across at the CVS to at least have the, the parking for our clients. And it's not just me, it's the, the salon also that has parking issues. So if, if you're taking two spots away from us in front of our business, then you're really limiting us with two businesses right there. So. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Um, I just want to say. Her, I didn't catch her last name. It's okay. Devlin. Can you spell that for me? D E V as in Victor L I N. Oh, Devlin. That's what you said. Dublin. I thought I. Devlin. When I, yeah. I couldn't tell what she said. Thank you very much. So, unfortunately, you know, this all falls back to whose fault per se. I mean, no one's here. No one that's alive because you know, unfortunately, when they laid out New Carlisle in 1910 or 1810, whenever they. You know, set those main buildings up. They didn't know that there would be some eyes and that we would need parking. And, you know, so it's unfortunate that that, that, you know, just, you know, nobody knew how to build, you know, how wide to build that street. Um, you know, interesting little piece of history, and I never knew this till I spoke to one of the guys on the, on the historical society, is that Main Street at one time, there was no parking on it at all, and that there were two lanes going north and two lanes going south. So some, and, and that was before Rite Aid or CVS was there for people to kind of overflow parking. It was when there was gas stations and trossels and the parts store, and that's the, the far back as I can remember it. So, it, you know, those stores in some way or somehow made it work with no parking back then. I mean, I don't know, I wasn't alive. But, you know, I, I, I gotta go back and think of what Chief Trustee says. I, I put a lot of thought into what he said. And, and safety, in my opinion, does not trump these turn lanes. I think, you know, what he said is, is very important to, to my view on all of this. Um, you know, but I also think that Mr. Kitko, you've done a great job with this because, you know, earlier on, a couple meetings back, I think we were all thinking we were going to be in the neighborhood of 15, 18 to 20 to 20 spots. And you've come back with basically, uh, what was it? Uh, eight. eight, eight, which is, I think, a huge compromise. Um, you know, I know a lot of people have elderly, elderly uh, customers that, that are in chairs and things of that nature. Um, you know, they're pretty good at getting around. I mean, I, you know, you see them a lot of times crossing the streets to go back and forth between the two shops on Main Street. Um, it's, I mean, nobody wants to have to make these decisions, but I think at the end of the day, you know, even if New Claw wasn't to grow, if we didn't put any of the developments in, I mean, this is still going to continue to be a problem because St. Paris is going to continue to grow. I heard there's a development going on up there. Um, you know, Huber Heights is almost on the verge of, in my opinion, getting taken over by Huber. So it's going to grow there. Park Lane, Huber Heights, Springfield. So our traffic count is going to continue to grow if, if New Carlisle doesn't develop uh, regardless. You know, a lot of people say, well, you we should have never put those or voted those developments in if this was going to cost us parking spots. Well, you know, Unfortunately, it's going to have to happen one of these days eventually. Um, I, I would disagree I, with what chiefs told me, what the deputies have told me, and just seeing it for myself. I mean, you're right. There's only the two periods that are bad. But I think in those periods and more in the evening, I think it is pretty justifiable to at least go with a minimum step of what Howie has presented. Um, it's not dramatic. It's not taking them all. There's still some parking in front of 
paves, there's still some parking. And, and that's the other thing. I know we are, someone already mentioned it, but that just drives me nuts that, that, that you know, parking is so valuable, but businesses park in front of their own businesses. If it was that valuable, if I owned a business on Main Street, I wouldn't be parking in front of my door. I'm not saying I'm not saying who. I'm just saying there's multiple. I've seen it for myself a million times, um, I'm, and I'm not knocking it. That's your the business owner's right, but it's hard for me to say, well, we can't take away parking, but it's okay for you to park one or two cars in front of your business uh, if parking is so valuable to a business. And I'm not saying it's not. If you didn't park, then you wouldn't park. Nobody enforces parking. So um, I just, Howie, I want to thank you for this because I think that for my two cents, this is a, a decent compromise. I think it'll it'll do what is needed, but um, that's just all I have to say. Mr. Bond. Uh I just, real quick, Mr. Campbell, I appreciate this. I, this took a lot of creativity, and um, I like that. I like uh, putting some thought into it and trying to come up with a solution that you know nobody else has come up with. Um, because <clears throat> this still interests me. And Howie, what does it cost to roughly just to reprogram? If we if we wanted to try this, what 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 would that cost us to to try to just reprogram the signals to this model? Well, that model is the one that I already given out at the beginning, so it's not new. Um, that is drafted in the first part of that where we're just doing signals. Um, new signal heads, I don't know the specific cost, but it'd be all new sig uh, signal heads to change it, and then you, you have them. So you go to a five head signal, the, the, the station that's there already has the equipment in to do it. Okay. So it wouldn't be a huge cost to try that and see. I could probably, before the next meeting, get a cost on it, what uh, roughly a signal head's going for, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just ballpark each one five grand minimum. Why would you need new signal heads? To What's add, that? To add a turn. Why would you need new signal heads? So, some to add turn or just reprogramming um, just to run greens on their own. If you want to try just the greens, that, that is just programming in the controller. We got to hire a contractor. He comes out and makes the adjustments in the cabin and that can go. Well, for, for this one, uh, what is it? like page two of this. Office. Yeah, that's the same one that I already uh, had given out with just the signal head part. Just, yeah, I mean, during, it seems like that would help. The engineer ran that through the model already. Yeah. So yes, it does help one, of the, one fourth of the intersection, but it bottlenecks the other three. That's just all I was stating. Yeah, yeah. It, except that the other three aren't at peak. Two of them are. One, right. There's two out of the four that are, yes. Yeah. So, so um, I don't know. I, I like maybe trying this. And I'm just and here to give the information. So. Right, right. <laughs> um, but, you know, those of you that have businesses downtown, I, I can tell you, even if we tried this and it works for a while, I see what we're talking about. It, it's coming at some point in time. I, I just to be you know brutally honest with you, it it it's coming. Um, but this well, may be a, this. Yeah. Let me go put that up on the market. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that may be something to think about. Um, but yeah, that's. that's Good. Say. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Go ahead, Mr. Rodwell. Uh, just that a new controller assembly is nine thousand dollars. Okay. A new controller assembly is nine grand. Five head controllers, nine thousand dollars. A new controller. A new light, a five control light. The light fixture or whatever. Nine thousand dollars. Our controller. Well, we have to, like how he said, we're going to have to add. Even if the light is just green, we're going to have to add, add a green arrow to give those who want to turn left notification that they can turn left. You're going to have to add to to the light as, as can it Can we just have a sign there that says green can go on left? Because I've seen those at places too where it's just a green arrow. If all other yeah. traffic is stopped, 
they can be left on green or something like that. I don't know the options. Instead of <laughs> buy a whole new system, yeah. you know, what, what can we do about that? I'll look into just a green, but I have not been to an intersection where I've gotten green and everybody else is standing still. Because I'll be like, well, I think they have green across from me. That's normal. If you get an, an arrow, that's called protected. Right. And you're protecting that. So they know that, that the other person has red. That makes sense. Lima has them. I mean, I'm in, I was in Lima today. They, they have ones where it gives you an option. You know, it's a, it's a green light and then a green arrow. Yes. Yeah. Right yeah. below it. So the green arrow tells the people who want to turn left, they can turn left. And if you're going straight, you have the green right away as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have to protect them with an arrow some yeah. way, shape, yes. or form. Yeah, but like I said, I mean, it's it's a it's you know it's mm -hmm. it's a yep. four it's a four headlight. Yep. Did you have something, Mr. Vice Yes. Um, first of all, we're looking at this now because it's time to fix the roof before it rains. Um, Talk about Madison School. Huh? Everybody's saying that you have to have parking in front of your shop. I don't see why. Everybody likes to compare us to Tip City. Let's look at Tip City. Have you ever tried to find a parking space on Main Street? It's very difficult. You usually have to park on one of the side streets. You look at Tip City almost any time of day and they have a ton of foot traffic. There are people constantly going back and forth. If people can walk even two blocks to a business in Tip City, surely they can do it here. Um, I mean, if, if we took out these parking spaces, you still have parking on Jefferson, you still have parking on Washington, you still have parking on Church Street. There is plenty of parking, it's just not where the businesses are. Um, personally, I like this best. I don't see where this is going to get us any benefit if there's only one car in the turn lane. If we're going to have two or three cars in the turn lane, we're going to have to take out all the parts. I don't like that idea. I like Ben's idea. We can try this, see how it works out, then go forward if it works. If not, go back to the drawing board. I'll get off my sofa. All right. Anyone else? That model that they're discussing has been tested and tried through Choice One, correct? Yes. Okay. So they're the experts on it, and I'm not knocking you down. Just I'm, yeah. my two cents is if it's been tried with Choice One, who is the experts in dealing with traffic patterns and flow, I feel it's just going to be a waste of money, and it's not going to work. I'm, I, you know, I know council are fairly smart people, I guess, but I don't think we're traffic smart, and I would say Choice One would probably probably know what they're talking about when it comes to that. I'm just I'm just repeating what the engineer told me and he said the model of just using protected left no turn lanes just at left arrows is not recommended. So all right. that's all I have. Protect are you talking turn arrows green and then just a green light? That's not what we're talking here. You, you have to you have to go with a green arrow. You can't go with just a green and everybody else is red. You have to find a way to protect traffic because the standard traffic flow is two way. Then a green and a green arrow. Mm -hmm. Then a green with a green and arrow. Come on at the same time, and then they both go off and it goes red. You can you can do that. Yeah, that's the only way. You start to get a green arrow in there some way, shape, or form. I still think that's going to be better than only allowing one car in turn lane. Spots. Because you'll be able to run street mm -hmm. one direction cleared Round out. Yeah, around direction about. cleared out. Around about. Another direction cleared out. <laughs> what about a roundabout? <laughs> I'm joking. Take out CBS, take out Rite Aid, take out Dan's building. Need an overpass. <laughs> right, overpass. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else, Mr. Cook? Ms. Eggleston? Nothing? All right. Anything else? I didn't say anything else. All right. Uh, no motions, no nothing. All right, so we're moving on. Two resolutions, uh, none tonight. Ordinances, Ms. Burner, if you would, please. Yes, okay, the first one. 
Mr. Uh, Council, not going to make any motion for tonight for us to work on like any additional information for the next meeting. So oh. we're not waiting until the last minute. How does Council want to guide the administration on our next steps, please? Yes, I mean, I would like, I'd make a motion to proceed with the, the proposed plan that was uh, given forward to council today. Proposed plan to given by staff or given by audience members? Staff. Okay. By the proposed that proposal that we have thrown in front of us. The elimination of eight current parking spots. So motion as described by yes. this. Okay. And I will second it. And again, the reason I'm second it is, like I said, I just, I think it's a fair compromise. Yeah, we go down church a little bit. Coming out, we also Where go down Main. Four hours a day this time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the motion to move forward with the proposed plan given today. Correct. The second I was Lowry, correct? Correct. Vice Mayor Grimm. No. Councilman Bond? No. Councilwoman Eggleston? No. Councilman Cook? No. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. That fails two to four. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Sir? I move that we move forward with uh, Dave and Linda Campbell's option number one. Can, can we name that as the first option submitted by Mr. Kiko on his report? So that's what came to council. Or no, that's not. That's uh, not the same. It, it, it's the same as the very first one that I stated. So I started with the full, and then I said, when you go to just signalization, that is that one. Well, then this is what, so, this is it. All right. Uh, signalization only is. It it's changing the the the. Uh, how would you title it? What's that? Program? How would you Changing the programming of the, of the signals and adding a turn arrow okay. each direction on Main Street. And not East direction on Main? Uh, hmm? Each direction on Main or just southbound? Change. North and south. North you and what? south since they'll both be the only green light. So are you saying four arrows for all four or just no. two? You, you need the eastbound. The southbound and your yeah, the south and east are your the two. If it, you, north and south. East just, and westbound would be unchanged. Yeah, so. Because you said most of the traffic turns, a lot of the traffic turns right. They'll still be able to do that. So the southbound, which you all know, is the worst. Yes. The yeah. eastbound is the second worst. That's the one that needs to get corrected as well with the southbound. Because you said the majority of people traveling east on Jefferson turn left on the main. Yes. And that's because they get yes. the bottleneck. Yes, because there's currently striped parking there that you cannot drive into a parking yes. space to go around. Mm. That's your highest traffic counts. So putting a turn signal going north on Main Street really isn't warranted if if we're not going to go full blown uh, recommendation with all four turn lanes. According to the engineer, that is what he stated. If you're going to do anything, you need to you need to protect them southbound left turns, mm -hmm. the eastbound left okay. turns, and the other two or whatever you want to do with them. Yeah. Which I mean, westbound's already got a turn lane. And westbound's already got. A turn. So let me ask: Could we could we possibly get rid of the turn lane on on westbound and add more parking on that side? Or is there? Well, no, because it's. Uh, what CVS with their okay. two ingress, they're ingress, e they're ingress egress points yes. of space yeah. in a way that yeah you couldn't do it. Okay, so how, how do we want him to word this? He wants basically you want three red lights and one green for a left and a straight going south. And then east and west normal. Whatever that point is. There's probably a motion just for signalization change with arrows and then we and not removing parking spots. Right. And no parking spots. We know we're not. Okay. Because westbound, you already have a turn lane. We repeat that to Mr. Graham so you can make a formal motion. Right. Yeah. Say what you just said. 
loud so the camera picks it up. Signalization change. And, uh, the signalization change with green arrow additions, no parking loss, no parking space removal. On Main Street? Anywhere. At the intersection. Yeah, any of it. Because east and west, Jefferson Street would be unchanged. Eastbound will get, eastbound needs to get changed. Most of the eastbound traffic goes through though. The, the, that's the problem. It's like the southbound. It gets held up by one car turning, and I've seen it stacked through the Church Street um, signal. <coughs> by the so, by the counts and by the engineer, the southbound left, the eastbound north going up Main are the two that definitely corrected. If you're doing a signal change only. But this one will, from my understanding, this correctly. We'll have this, and then they'll be able to turn. While that's going on, I leave for work every day heading east out, and I get stopped here a lot. It's it's bad here. It so is. if we didn't put a turn lane there, or turn arrow, we would have an arrow going here. Can we get rid of the traffic of the street. I'll turn it down. Run that by me again, spots? Randy. Randy. Most of these people. I'm getting a headache. I mean, these people get stuck. <laughs> you should have called. Right. <laughs> like everybody said. Yeah. Randy, can you run that by me again? Oh, I just say I, I leave westbound off of 571. I turn that Franco to Food Day, Food Day, Foodie, Food Day, Food Day, and then I go across Main Street, and that little section right there is bad. It's just backed up. Now, I leave at varying time, varying time. Sometimes I leave at 6, sometimes I leave at 4 30. But a lot of the times I do get held up there. Because um, a lot of people turn left to go up north, where I'm trying to go straight across. So it is an issue there. I don't think. I think more of the issues north south, don't get me wrong, from what I've experienced, but I do see some backup heading east. And then, I mean, yeah, heading there, west, then it's there's not much there. There's already here to turn lane there. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you guys have to pick and choose if you want me to help you out with this. So, if you want to impact your north southbound lines, your westbound's probably, your eastbound's going to be impacted for sure. You got to pick in a negative way. Well, it depends on what, it's only certain times of the month, certain times of the day. Right. You know, other than that, you have it. You have you have signals right there at Church Street at Jefferson, um, so that helps maintain that traffic flow too. Um, but yeah. But what he's and I'm I'm just clarifying, so I'm making sure what I'm understanding. So what he's suggesting is that first option you had. Yes. Signals with turn arrows. On southbound Main and eastbound Jefferson. And how would the turn arrows operate? The, the arrows, it, it's going to be um, trial and error. You know how if you go out there and you set them for 15 seconds, then you get then you get the green with it. How much does that affect the rest of the intersection? Right. Do you because five is too short. Ten sounds like a long time, but it's probably not. So then it'll, it'll be playing with it. Plus you have the two original signals communicating with each other to get that traffic flow. That's not what this is. I get that, but is. you have CMAC federal funds that say that these two have to communicate. So we're trying to work on a signal down here yeah. without affecting the two. We can change this stuff. But, but your proposition is not this. My this first one is, is that. This is one way green and one way green then two ways green you can't do just greens that's the problem you have to have an arrow you have well, to yeah. put green with an arrow then green with an arrow yeah so yeah it's a it's a it's a head change so, so that's signal and, change only the green and arrow come on then they go off and turns red southbound or northbound the green and arrow come on and then they go off and it goes red Yeah, it's a, it, it, every, every action is going to cause a reaction to something else. But right. that's going to be, no matter, you, you change it now, you change it five years down the road, oh. we're landlocked, there's only really so much you can do. Well, Harry brought up a good point. I mean, is this going to affect us in, with any of the federal funding? No, we can change those arrows down here, but we can't go through and just be messing with the timing and the radar detection so much that we've helped that south, but we've completely screwed up the Lake Avenue 
intersection and, and change what was meant with the straight north south. But if southbound traffic backs up, then Lake will hold traffic there, correct? No, the, the goal is congestion mitigation, is to get them running through. So the goal is to get that left hand person turning towards Tecumseh to get them out of the way. So this but if there's only one spade, one car can fit in the left turn lane. What well, good is that going to do? Not in that. There's a you can fit about three in there. It goes back to the taper. Yes. Yeah, you can get three in the turn lane coming back to that taper. Twenty-five foot per parking spot, so you can actually get three about three and a half cars in there. Okay, this says twenty-five feet, and you said the average car is what seventeen feet. It's about seventeen, yeah. That's one car and eight feet, one and a half but, cars. It's not the length of the channelizing line, it's the total length of the, of the space there. From the taper to where it splits into a turn in a straight. So it's 50 feet, right? So 50, 36, 80 some, about 80 some feet. Yeah, I say it's over three cars length. Cause you already got the, there's already, at, at the light there's no parking there. So there's already, that's, that's that 25 feet you're seeing there. That's the original and then if you taper back the three, two spots plus the taper, that's an additional probably 65 feet. So then we're talking over here, it's 50 feet. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. So, 50. This, this 25, that's already because there's no parking. Two, right. So whatever. these would be the others. Two, these, are already, these are 25 feet parking. So 25, 25 within the taper. So you're looking at actually probably closer to, like how we said, 80 some feet Can we use the for that turn. So you're actually talking probably closer to four, if not really five. I have to find a versus that one. That one at 25, that's already there. That's what that is. That's it's really bad. That. But that's because there's already no parking there. For that last 25 feet to the center spot. That's what that is. So there's already no parking there. So it already gives you kind of a pass. But the problem is when you get two cars and there's someone's parked here, you can't pass. So that'd be one parking spot, so 25, 25, plus that 25, plus the taper, and more about 86 okay. I've got so five four months. Four cars, five cars, depending on the size. Does it? Then we have at least the heads to move forward. Oh, of course, Mr. Bond. This is going to result, we're going to have to change the white heads anyway for this. Right? Mr. Kitko? No, he's an eye to it. They're new enough, we can add. I'm sure you do, but I'm going to ask Mr. Kitko first. Whoa, that's not how this works <laughs> on this side, so it comes to me. Well, he has a question, but yeah. I think he can answer. Well, still, it goes to me first, and then so, I can direct it down. So this, we have to change these lights anyway and add arrows, correct, to that signal there anyway. So, so you're going to say what exactly what I was saying. Uh, I was okay. just talking to Mr. Kitko. This is going to need to be baby stepped up. There is a need now, but there's going to be more of a need in five years. So the good compromise is to start with the combination of Mr. Kiko's option and then this option. We can get the signal heads. What I want to ask Mr. Kiko is if we get the signal heads, and let's just say two years down the road, now we need to move forward and move some spots. Could we use the existing heads we already, we already purchased? We know at some point in time the need is for turnaround. We know that. Is it now? According to the data, yes, but that doesn't mean it's still going to work. You know, so the way I look at it, maybe step into it, go with this option, see how that works. We already have the signal heads. And then as the years progress, we'll look at removing the, the turn spaces. I'm a firm believer in, if you're only putting three spots in for turning, that's not gonna help the problem. It backs up way too much for that to happen. You need to remove five, six, seven plus eight spots. If not, it's, it's, it's gonna get congested. I come 235 South during the day. I've been doing a lot the past couple weeks just to see what it's like. So, but, no matter what decision is made, it's always going to impact some other party or some other intersection. So in order to move this along, I think we go with maybe steps. We see what this can do, get the signalization in, and then move forward onto it as the years go on. That's just probably the easiest way to go forward with it. The other thing is, can't the fire department control the signals when they need to? Not at all. So we don't have, we don't, you can have them put in. We don't have it because typically you'll have those where they got to run through five, six, seven signals. 
to be able to run straight through. And it's very expensive. I was just thinking, just to have that one dump south, and them to have the ability to just take it and dump that one to turn and go south would enable them to get to any, you know, if they're going to sewing or they're going to... So if, even, to get, even to get to the health thing downtown, if they just were able to dump that one to clear that traffic to mm -hmm. be able to go there, I don't know. Yeah, that system is typically set up to allow that truck to just be able to have a green, not be behind 20 cars, get through a signal. I mean, it could work that way, but you know everybody scatters and then blocks the intersection anyway. Something we could look at later. We don't need to turn it off. Okay, I move. <laughs> That we Say it add, nice and loud so the camera can That we add turn lanes, uh, that we add turn arrows both directions on Main Street. Reprogram the lights so we have one direction green on Main Street, one direction green on Main Street, both directions green on Jefferson to see how that works. I don't think we need a turn lane northbound on Main. I don't think we need a turn lane. Not a turn lane. A turn light. I don't even think we need a turn light on northbound Main. You said if you have just one direction green, you should have an arrow to eliminate doubt. Even though after three seconds, if nobody moves, people would realize, well, they don't have a light. Yeah. Uh, Vice Mayor Graham, can you reword your motion to say just simply more general? because we don't want to pigeonhole and say this has got to be left, it's got to be green, it's got to be that. And if we just say signalization change to improve efficiencies without removing parking spots, that way Howie can go and have a lot more uh, examples of what to do, where an arrow there, arrow this, arrow that. Instead of saying this got to be there, this got to be there. I think the gist of it is enhance the signalization for better traffic control without removing turn lights. I mean parking spots. Does that make sense? And possibly adding turn lights. Well, that would be part of the traffic signalization improvements. What he said sounds good to me. Okay, got it. <laughs> and here's the second. Ms. Eggleston. Okay. Council my No. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. Mayor Lowry. No. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Baum. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Oh. Yes. That passes for two. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Let's move on, shall we? Yes, we shall. All right. Resolutions done tonight. Ordinances, if you would, please. All right. The first one is read only again. Uh, Ordinance 2023-34 introduced on May 15th. Public hearing in action on July 17th, 2023. Creating the Honey Creek Tax Increment Financing Incentive District, declaring improvements to the parcels within each incentive district to be a public purpose and exempt from real property taxation, requiring the owners of those parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of those service payments, requiring the distribution of a portion of those service payments to the Tecumseh Local School District and the Springfield Clark Career Technology Center and specifying the public infrastructure improvements that benefit or serve parcels in the incentive district. Mm -hmm. Ordinance 2023-41 introduced on June 20th public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance adopting the tax budget for the City of New Carlisle, Ohio for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2024 and submitting the same to the auditor of Clark County, Ohio. So second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Roadwall. Uh, explanation of this ordinance, this is step one of our overall budgetary process. This leads into our 2024 operating budget. This is called a tax budget. It's there to uh, determine the need to levy taxes, your property taxes. So basically any fund that we get that receives any kind of property tax, we report on and then they, we send that back to the county auditor and they give us our first estimate of estimated resources. So this is just really a uh, housekeeping item. And again, don't pay attention to these numbers. What with fund balances, they're definitely going to change before the year end. Any discussion? When you're ready, please. We're the second? Yes, ma'am. Mayor Lauer. Yes. 
Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. That's a six zero. Then next, I would need a motion under other business to excuse Mr. Lindsay for tonight. Tonight's second motion by Mr. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Motion by Mr. Uh, Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Bond to excuse Mr. Lindsay. Okay, Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Graham. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. That's a six zero. All right, and any other Grimm. council business? Anything? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Rodwell, second by Mr. Vice Mayor to adjourn. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman yes. Cook? Councilman Rodwell? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Mm -hmm. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Motion to adjourn. That's a right.